All right, fam, we are in a bear market. The stock market has been trending down for the last six months or so. Whether the market is up or down, there are always opportunities to make money. In this video, I'm reviewing three ways to make money in a bear market. Now, you may have noticed that I am missing something or someone. Mr. Lee is not with us today because he is out showing homes to clients. Yay for business, because as you guys know, we need to make that sh money. What's up, Legacy Builders? I'm Rob. I'm Rishon. And, and this, this is Learn Hustle, Hustle Grow. Grow. She's a stock trader. He's a realtor. And we are debt-free investors. If you've been following our journey, then you know that at the end of 2018, we left our W-2 jobs, and in 2019, we traveled the world. We focused on debt pay down and long-term investing to achieve financial independence. Each week, we drop a video sharing our knowledge and experience regarding money, real estate, and investing. Occasionally, we share our travel experiences. I have a ton of awesome information to share, but we need to get down to business first. I need you guys to give this video a thumbs up, make sure you share it, and try to watch it all the way through. The YouTube algorithm is measuring us on whether or not you guys engage, so feel free to drop a comment below. We might think it's great content, but if you don't interact, then YouTube doesn't agree and it won't promote this video to others. So we appreciate your support. Please give us a like, thumbs up, and subscribe. March of 2020 marked the end of the longest running bull market in stock market history. Now, 2008 to 2020 was not without its hiccup, but those who chose to invest consistently during that period of time have experienced some major life changes. For us, we invested our incomes in both stock market and real estate, and that led to us being able to pay off our mortgage, fund our retirement accounts, fund a 529, and eventually leave our corporate jobs. We all understand that what goes up must come down. The last market was doing so well that people began to wonder if it would ever come down. Of course, analysts had been forecasting a crash for years. So we understand that a bull market is when the stock market is doing great, consistently rising. Now, let's talk about a bear market. What's a bear market? A bear market is defined as a drop of 20% or more from the market peak. Now this definition is based on the overall indices. So if the S&P 500 doesn't drop 20% or more, then analysts and pundits will not actually call a bear market. However, we've seen 60% or more of the stocks on the market drop 20, at least 20% in the last six months. What do you guys think? Are we in a bear market? Yes or no? Drop a comment. Even those who haven't declared the last six months of decline a bear market have started to wonder whether or not the last few weeks of turnaround are the end of a quote unquote bear market. The S&P 500 at the time of this recording has returned about 16% year over year. So if you are an index fund investor who's consistently invested over a period of time, your overall portfolio may still be green. Winning. Bear markets create fear. Fear creates opportunity. What investments have you made in 2022? Share with the community. When markets drop, they drop fast. I mean, we've all seen it happen. It's like, whoa. If you're following the market, you've not only heard the term bear market, you've also heard the term market correction. So what is a market correction? A market correction is a drop in price that ranges between 10 and 20%. These are normal occurrences in the market. Nothing to be afraid of, they happen frequently. However, they last only about a few weeks to a few months. I know what you're wondering. What's the difference between a bear market and a correction? Well, it's the time frame. Historically, bear markets have averaged anywhere from 14 to 16 months. So we won't see an official declaration until we've hit that time frame. Here's what you need to know. Markets go up more than they go down. If you exit the market, you risk missing some of the best performing days. 
When that happens, it has a significant impact on the overall growth of your portfolio. Never stop investing for your retirement. Rob and I are never out of the market. We've shared before that we modified the Dave Ramsey baby steps to continue investing while we were paying off our debt. Having met and married in our 30s, we understood that time was not on our side. A bear market is usually seen as a negative. Look, we get it. When we go long on a position, meaning that we buy it and plan to hold it, we want the market to go up. That's human nature. At the same time, that fear, which drives the volatility, creates an opportunity. It's up to us to take advantage of that opportunity. How many of us are wishing that we were in a position to invest even more during that drop in March of 2020? With that said, let's talk about how we can take advantage of this bear market. We're going to discuss three strategies to make money during a bear market. But before we do that, I have a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I am not giving investing advice. I do not know your personal financial situation or investment goals. This is purely for educational purposes only. If you're new to this channel, I am an actual student in the Invest with Terry VIP Trade and Travel course. I enrolled in the course in January of 2020, and I am grateful for the lifetime membership. I feel as though I will always be learning when it comes to trading. Now, if you are a student in the course, or if you're a trade cousin following our journey, then you know you need access to the VIP curriculum in order to learn bear market trading strategies. The first strategy is short selling. You are going to sell shares on margin in anticipation of buying them back at a lower price in order to make a profit. That's right. It's actually the opposite of buying low and selling high. You are going to sell high using borrowed funds and then buy them back at a lower price. I've always been curious about why the broker allows you to borrow rather than require you to use your own money. However, that's part of the process. You borrow the money, you have to have a margin account in order to short, and it can help you win big, but it can also lead to losing big. If you miss uh, a short and you do not have a stop loss in place, you can blow up your account. The next strategy is options trading. As an options trader, when the market is down or going down, you can either sell a call or buy a put. Both of those are options to execute when the market is trending down. Buying a put or selling a call means that you believe that the market is going to continue to trend down. Again, it's a situation where you're taking on more risk because you own a contract for a hundred shares of that position that gives you the option to execute in one direction or the other. You can and should use a stop loss when trading options as well. Whether or not you decide to execute either of these strategies, the first thing you want to do is get some education. You don't want to take on additional risk in your portfolio without educating yourselves properly. I will drop a link to the trade and travel course in the description below. Feel free to investigate and research other options as well. Other course options, that is. I know I'm using the word option a lot, but you get it, right? The third strategy is to build a long-term portfolio you have the opportunity to invest gradually. Last year, I implemented a trading strategy where I purchased 20 to 25 sh shares at a time in order to help mitigate my risk. If you have a lump sum of cash to invest, you can invest at 25 to 30% at a time. If you don't have a lump sum amount to invest, first start by getting your 401k match. There's absolutely no reason to miss out on free money. Once you've achieved that, start saving an amount of your paycheck on a consistent basis in order to invest those funds in a brokerage account. 
Start buying stocks consistently and frequently. Either way, this will lead to dollar cost averaging. We have seen the future and the future is technology. Rob and I love technology, not only because of the apps that make our lives easier, but also because we realize that access to more information means access to greater opportunity. Even if it's not your jam, don't label yourself technology illiterate. We catch on when we want to. We've somehow figured it out when it comes to being entertained or using apps to get money like Cash App or Zelle. Embrace technology when it's being implemented in your industry. Those employees who catch on to the technology advancement advancements that change the business will be invaluable. Every industry is making efforts to increase productivity and efficiency through the use of technology. We've seen the impact of social media on the, as far as the ability to create and grow businesses. For those reasons, we are heavily investing in technology. Yes, we are absolutely holding cash positions to invest in both Amazon and Google after those stocks split. Are you investing in those companies? Comment below. This is a great time to invest. Start by creating a watch list of companies that are currently trading at or below $100 per share. The lower price point gives you an opportunity to buy more shares should you decide to do so. The following is a list of long-term ideas. Individual stocks, symbols, PFE, FIS, KR, CVS, H. P E I R M C X O M I N T C P H M index funds. These are sector ETFs. X L F X L E T E C L F I N X. IXN XLP 1Q ONEQ Future Opportunity ETFs BKCH METV BTCR Do your research. Use sites like CNBC, Yahoo Finance, and Google Finance to gather the information you need to make an educated decision. Do not invest in anything based solely on having heard the name of a stock or a company on a YouTube show or podcast. Tell us what you think about these ideas in the comments below. What is your long-term strategy? See you in the next video.